Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Donovan and in today's video, we're gonna be testing out the brand new Garmin Venue SQ. We're gonna go out on a first run with the watch and uh, specifically we're gonna be testing three things out. Number one, the battery life, we're gonna see how well it does. Now I am gonna leave the always on display on because personally I just prefer to always be able to see the metrics while I'm running. So that is going to burn through a little bit more battery than probably the average person who doesn't use always on. So that's the first thing we're testing out the battery. Number two, we're gonna be testing out that heart rate sensor. Um, I've had really good luck with Garmin uh, watches in terms of heart rate accuracy. So we're gonna test that out on the Venue SQ. I anticipate that it's gonna be just as accurate as like my 400 245 music for instance or even my garmin 45 um, because it has the exact same heart rate sensor as those two watches and then the third thing we're going to test out of course is the gps accuracy um, so i do have it set to um, every second uh, in terms of uh, location accuracy um, so that should make it so that it's pretty much spot on um, there is also a smart mode so in smart mode you are going to get much better battery life um, but I have it set to every second to get the most accurate GPS. Um, I do also have it on GPS plus GLONASS, um, so you can use GPS only, uh, that is an option. You can use GPS plus Beidou, and then the third thing is uh, you can use GPS plus GLONASS. So that's what I've typically used with other Garmin watches. I found it to be very accurate for me, uh, so that's how I'm using it on uh, the Venue SQ. So let's go ahead and get after it. We're gonna test out those three things, battery life, GPS, and heart rate. Let's go. All right, so today's plan is to head out for about uh, 11 miles. So I'm gonna do 10 miles plus five by hill sprint. So that's gonna end up putting me right around 11 miles. Now, I'm not actually gonna be taking the camera with me out on the run because as you can see, you wouldn't be able to see much anyways because it's pitch black out. Um, the sun won't rise for about another hour. Um, so towards the end of the run, I'll maybe uh, get some running footage. Uh, but other than that, we're just going to be testing out the GPS, the battery life, and the heart rate sensor. All right, let's get after it. All right, so we are currently 9.36 miles into this run. Heart rate of 154 at the moment, according to the Garmin Venue SQ. According to the Apple Watch, we have 9.35. Uh, so it's actually slightly behind the Garmin Venue SQ as far as heart rate. Obviously that's changed just a little bit because I'm going downhill if you couldn't tell. But it's 152. So far the two have been pretty spot on in terms of heart rate with each other. A slight difference in the distance with the Venue SQ showing slightly more distance. Um, but we will get back to the office, look at the data, and uh, compare them up. All right, so we are back from our run. We got the 10 miles plus five by hill sprints out of the way and uh, finished up with the Garmin Venue SQ at 11.36 miles. Average pace of, I think it was 706 per mile and uh, 152 beats per minute. So probably a little faster, <laughs> a little higher heart rate than what it should have been for today. It was supposed to be kind of an easier day but got a little excited in those middle miles. Now, in comparison to the Apple Watch, uh, Apple Watch had it at 11.29 miles, so seven one hundredths of a mile less than what Garmin had it at. Um, but again, Garmin was on uh, monitoring every second for GPS, so the most accurate possible. And then the Apple Watch had me at 154 beats per minute, so two beats per minute higher than what the Garmin had. And uh, we'll actually talk about that difference because I think it was actually Apple that was off on that one. Um, and I'll explain that when we get back to the office. Also take a look at those maps in detail just to see if maybe we can figure out where the difference came in. So we'll go back to the office and uh, check it out. I just realized that I actually forgot to mention one of the other things that I told you I'd tell you about. So uh, we talked about heart rate, we talked about GPS. The other thing I want to talk about is the battery life. So uh, over that 11 miles, took an hour and 20 minutes or so, um, I went down to 83% battery. So that's a drop of 11% over 11 miles. So 
basically 1% per mile now. That's using the most accurate GPS, the display always on while I'm running, so never shut off, and um, no music though. So uh, I was saving a little bit of battery by not using music. Typically that doubles the uh, battery drain, so you know I would expect about 22% if I was listening to music uh, in that same period. So 11% battery over 11 miles, pretty acceptable to me. All right, so we are back in the office. So I want to go ahead and share with you those stats that I mentioned a little bit earlier so you can see them graphically and how they look on the Garmin. Um, so we're going to go down here and uh, find that workout. So here it is in my history. Um, you can see I've done two activities. So yesterday I did a treadmill run, so wasn't a great one to actually show anything on. But here we did a, a workout. This is the workout we did this morning. And if I can actually click on it, there we go. All right, so uh, we have a distance of 11.36 miles, pace 70. Six, and then um, you can see calories burned and average heart rate of 152. So the two I want to focus on, of course, are the pace, the average heart rate, and the distance. So those are the three important ones um, that we're going to do comparisons of. So over here on the Apple Watch, same exact workout, and I'll kind of break that down. Um, but you can see 11.29 miles, so a difference of seven one hundredths of a mile, where the Garmin is actually showing a little bit more distance. So that's also going to be the difference in the pace per mile. Um, but then the heart rate, 153. So in terms of heart rate average, 152 here versus 153, and actually in this case, the Apple Watch is the one that's probably off um, because if you see here, it had a initial, uh, so for that first mile, a uh, heart rate of 180, which definitely is not accurate. Um, there was no way my heart rate got all the way up to 180. That's basically my max. Um, so I know that's inaccurate. Um, and what happened was for that first minute or two, sometimes an Apple Watch will artificially kind of jump up there in terms of heart rate, and then it'll stabilize and get back to normal. And that's what happened here. So for that first mile, my heart rate never was actually 153 for the average. Um, so that was a little bit off, but after that it was good. Um, and so that's the difference between those two. As far as distance though, that one I'm not really sure on. Um, with my Apple Watch and the Garmin 245 Music, let's get out of that. Um, these two have pretty much always been spot on with each other. So what I wanna do is in another run, I'm gonna go ahead and test it out next to my Garmin 245 Music. I have them both set to um, actually do GPS every one second. So that's the, again, that's the uh, most accurate GPS you can get on these two watches. So I'm gonna try that out and see if they're the same um, or if this one is gonna show you know, more distance uh, compared to the 245 Music. So we'll test that out some more. Um, but here is the actual run. We'll go into the map here. There we go and zoom in a little bit. All right, so you can see basically it just traced along these roads and you can see it did a really good job tracing right along the road. So I'm not really sure which one is the correct one. I mean, seven one hundredths of a mile to me is very acceptable in terms of a difference. Um, where often we'll get those issues is on this hill repeat. So, um, with other watches, I've noticed that it like drops off a bunch in these hill repeats because you're constantly turning back and forth. Um, so most likely that's probably where the issue came um, in terms of the difference in distance, but I'm not 100% sure there. Um, so we'll have to do some more testing. But again, uh, this is first impressions, first run with the Venue SQ so far heart rate. Uh, GPS and battery life all seem pretty darn good. We'll do a full deep dive into the software in a future video, also comparing it up to other watches like the Versa 3 that I've also been reviewing and uh, the Apple Watch SE in a future video as well. Thanks for watching. Hope this video has been helpful for you and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace.